Now in a single entry scenario, now you have calculated total sales and total purchase. It's now time for us to prepare an income statement using single entry and incomplete records. Now let us make an income statement. Now the point to remember is that, that the format for income is the same whether we are making an income statement using proper double entry records or whether we are making a single entry using the incomplete records. The format would be the same. For, uh, first of all, I'm preparing the format for you. First of all, there's, there is a figure known as revenue. Uh, revenue after sales revenue there we, we deduct return inward also known as sales return now after that we have cost of sales cost of sale is calculated as first of all we need to calculate uh, when first of all need, need to prepare the right opening inventory then we have purchases then return outward also known as purchase return then we need to add carriage inward. Now there is two type of carriage. One is carriage inward and one is carriage outward. Carriage inward refers to a situation when we are buying goods for the business and the transportation cost that we are incurring while bringing in goods to our business that is the shop or warehouse. So this is carriage inward and carriage outward refers to a situation when we are selling goods or delivering goods to customer. So the delivery cost is basically to customers is known as carriage outward. Now the carriage inward comes in the cost of sale we'll need to add here in cost of sale and the carriage outward becomes part of expenses then we did a closing inventory because the goods haven't been sold yet so if we add or subtract these things we'll be getting cost of sale we normally write cost of sale two times once when we are uh, putting it as an heading for uh, to calculate cost of sale and the final figure in front of final figure we are also writing cost of sale uh, then if we uh, deduct uh, cost of sale from the net sale figure, we'll be getting the figure for gross profit. Then we'll be adding other incomes. Other income refers to as uh, rent receive or rent receivable, commission receive or commission receivable, discount receive, any other thing uh, that is received. Uh, there can be a gain on disposal or decrease in provision for doubtful debt. These all come in other income. Then we have expenses. Finally, we have profit for the year. Now, my dear students, the sale figure we have already calculated in the earlier part uh, and the total sale figure we need here. Uh, this is 25,500 total sale figure. OK, and the total purchase figure that we have already calculated is 9000. We have already deducted drawing of goods. Uh, and how did we calculate this figure? You need to watch the earlier parts of this video. Part one for single entry and this uh, total sales and part two for credit purchase total purchase we have already calculated the sales and purchase figure then we need to calculate return inward return inward is also always all, always given in the question if there is and uh, is it's already given in the question we need to deduct return inward uh, then if we deduct return inward from the sale we'll be getting net sale figure after that opening inventory must be given in the question uh, but if we have the f uh, uh, if we are in the first year of the business and we have just started the business this is the first year that then we do not have an opening inventory figure we have already calculated a uh, purchase we, ha we have been given the figure for return outward uh, let's suppose carriage inward is 500 now what i have done in this question i have uh, not given you the examiner has basically not given you the closing inventory figure and if the closing inventory is not given my dear student there are some other concept we need to learn here and the concepts refer to markup and margin now what is basically markup and margin my dear students markup is basically given in this question 25 percent what is markup basically markup is basically a percentage that is applied on cost of sale figure in order to calculate uh gross profit okay markup is basically my dear students uh, a percentage that we apply on cost of sale figure in order to calculate gross profit uh, my dear students if the sale figure is given we need to apply a margin percentage on the sale figure in order to calculate a gp but if we have a cost of sale figure we need to apply a markup now there are two types of percentages my dear students a margin percentage is applied on sales in order to calculate a gp gross profit markup percentage is applied on cost of sale in order to calculate gross profit now if we have sales and if we are given a margin there is no issue we need to apply margin on the sales in order to calculate gp and if we are given cost of sales value and if we are given markup in the question 
accident then also there is no issue the issue then arises my dear students if you have a sales figure and if you have a markup figure now the question here arises can a markup percentage be applied on sales the answer is no markup cannot be applied on sales instead markup is applied on cost of sales so what we need to do we need to convert our markup percentage to margin percentage why because margin is easily being applied on the sale figure in order to calculate gross profit okay so how can we calculate margin when we are being given markup in the question uh, if we are given markup in the question, markup can be converted into margin by using a simple formula and the formula is markup upon 100 plus markup. Okay, markup upon 100 plus markup gives us the value of margin. Now let us try this. Markup is 25% and we need to divide it by 100 plus markup. If we add 25 to 100, it becomes 125. Okay, 25 upon 125, this becomes 1 upon 5 or basically 0.2. 0 0.2 if we multiply it from uh, with 100 this becomes 20 percent 20 percent of 1 upon 5 means the same thing now my dear students uh, if we have inserted markup in this figure we uh, got margin okay and if we uh, insert margin in a formula we get markup okay now we have margin margin percentage basically is applied on sales if we apply 20 percent to the sales figure we we can calculate gross profit okay 24 300 times 20 percent becomes gross profit that is 4860 my dear students if you are selling something uh, in 24300 and if we uh, need to uh, uh, keep our profit that is 4860 uh, if we need to earn profit of 4860 uh, and if we are selling the figure uh, uh, for this the cost would be always lower okay if i am selling something for 24300 and out of that 24300 4860 is basically my profit so if we deduct profit from this sale figure i'll be getting the figure for cost of sale okay now the cost of sale i've already got cost of sale that is 19440 now how can we calculate the closing inventory if we have all of these items we can calculate this with the help of reverse working now how can we do that my dear student if I add opening inventory with purchase and if I did a return outward and add carriage inverts and did a closing inventory I can get a cost of sale but as you can see we have already calculated cost of sale through markup or margin calculation now what we need to do we need to do reverse working uh, we, we can start with cost of sale and the items that were added previously now we need to deduct those items that is opening purchase and carriage and word these uh, positive values we need to deduct this and the negative value that is written outward we need to add this okay 19440 plus uh, uh, 550 and we need to deduct all of these value in order to arrive the figure for closing inventory now uh, as you can see we have already calculated uh, closing inventory with the help of reverse working now what if sir uh, we are given a margin in the question and we are being given the cost of sale so the margin cannot be applied on cost of sale for cost of sale we need to have a figure for markup now how can we calcul uh, calculate uh, markup when we are given margin in the question we need to apply a simple formula my dear student the formula would be margin upon 100 minus margin now uh, we need to remember these two formula markup upon 100 plus markup gives the figure for margin and margin upon 100 minus margin uh, gives the figure of markup now you can remember this uh, by this way that mark up up means plus okay markup upon 100 plus markup so in the markup to margin formula we use uh, with the when we have markup we'll be using the plus formula and we have the margin we will be using the minus formula in order to calculate markup okay we can also test this that we have a margin figure of 20 percent we have uh, calculated margin uh, now if we use margin can we go for markup yes we can go for that 20 upon 100 minus margin 100 minus 20 100 minus 20 refers to 20 20 upon 80 okay 20 upon 80 refers to 1 upon 4 or maybe uh, 0 0.25 0 0.25 becomes 25 percent now as you can see my dear students uh, if you have a margin of 20 percent we can convert it easily into markup and if you have a markup of 25 percent we can convert it to margin so one more thing you need to remember my dear students that 
uh whenever we are converting there is a, a hint or there is a technique to see whether we have ca converted it ca calculate uh, correctly or not and the hint is that whenever you are converting uh, always the markup figure would be greater markup percentage would always be higher as compared to margin and why is that so my dear students because markup is is being applied on cost figure and cost is smaller figure as compared to sales okay if you are applying a margin on the sales if you are applying a percentage on the sales sales is a bigger amount so on the bigger amount we need to apply a smaller percentage and on the smaller amount that is cost of sale we need to apply a higher percentage okay so this is the rule you need to remember whenever we are converting and whether we are not sure whether we have converted it correctly or not we can apply this rule that markup will always be higher than margin our margin will always be lower than markup in any given question okay now let us complete this income statement for other income we have discount receive or there can be other items as well rent receive or rent receivable commission receive gain on disposal or decrease on provision okay when when we add other income to this gross profit figure this is the uh, this is the uh, a figure which has no name okay this is a no name figure 5110 then we have expenses uh, if we have put a discount received in the other income heading we need to uh, put discount allowed in an expenses heading then we have a bad debt also known as irrecoverable debt this is always an expense then we have rent basically uh, uh, the, these are dummy expenses i'm just putting it just to complete the income statement so how can we calculate a rent or any other expenses in a single uh, entry scenario first of all we have a figure in the cash book uh, that the rent paid rent paid figure would be there now you may be where my dear students said at the end of the year the prepaid value is always deducted and uh, the accrued value is always added okay just remember one thing that accrued will be uh, uh, plus accrued plus and prepaid minus just remember this accrued will be added at the end of the year and prepaid will be deducted at the end of the year now if we have closing prepaid prepaid value will be deducted why we are deducting closing prepaid therefore uh, we are deducting it because this rent belongs to the next year uh, if i am making the account for 2020 this rent is prepaid we have uh, paid an extra rent for 2021 so therefore did not need to charge this rent right now will be charging it in future okay so we need to deduct a closing prepaid and if we are deducting closing prepaid will be adding opening prepaid okay so if the closing prepaid is being deducted the opening prepaid will always be added so let's suppose we have paid the rent 5000 and the closing prepaid is it is for the next accounting period we are deducting this and opening prepaid we are adding it why because we paid this in the previous period that is 2019 2019 but this belongs to the current year that is 2020 okay so this is the adjustment we need to make in any of the expenses similarly in electricity uh, the electricity that we have paid uh, is 3000 and the closing accrued would be added it added why we are adding closing accrued uh, the reason for that is we have used the electricity but we have not paid uh, for electricity bill so therefore we are adding this accrual expense that is owing and opening accrued would be deducted why because we have paid this bill but this bill does not belong to the current year this belong to the previous year okay we just need to remember that accrued will be uh, added at the end of the year and it will be subtracted at the start of the year and the prepaid will be uh, deducted uh, at the end of the year and added at the start of the year okay so lastly last but not the least we have depreciation uh in single entry scenario my dear students mostly depreciation method or rate or the life of the asset is not given okay if we do not have been given the rate of depreciation or the method of depreciation or the life of the non current asset uh, we are left with no choice but to use a method that is known as revaluation method my dear students revaluation method is basically used uh, where uh, there are small value assets such as loose tools or crockery or crates or such like this uh, a small uh, piece of equipment or or whenever we are not being given with the method or rate uh, percentage or the life of the asset will be using a revaluation method then in revaluation method my dear student there is a small formula which we need to apply uh, that is opening value then we have an addition then we have a disposal and finally closing uh, and we have made a mnemonic i have made a mnemonic for this to just to remember this uh, o and a level from uh, 
DC may be a defense campus, okay? O and A level from defense campus. Uh, o, o is basically opening and A is addition and D is disposal uh, and C is closing value. Opening means the asset values that we have at the start of the year. Addition, we have bought new assets in this year. Disposal, we have sold any existing assets. And closing is the remaining value of the asset at the end of the year. Let's suppose we have assets at the start of the year worth 10,000. So, okay, this is the value. We have bought new assets worth 5,000. This becomes 15,000. The asset that, that we have sold during the year, uh, we have sold it for 2,000 or basically the value of those assets for 2,000 at the time of disposal. Now, we, we will be never be using the original cost of the asset in this method. We'll be always using the value that we have uh, at the time of disposal. Okay, maybe we have, maybe we have bought those assets for 4,000 uh, originally two or three years back but we'll be using the uh, value that is the at the at the time of disposal current market value okay fair value 2000 and the closing value maybe we have 3500 now uh, if we add both of these two uh, this will become 15000 and if we deduct uh, 5500 this become 9500 okay so the value that is missing from the depreciation uh, the non current asset account is basically depreciation okay the depreciation figure this is the working we have depreciation figure if we add all of these expenses and if we deduct the expenses from this figure, we'll be getting profit for the year. And now, as you can see, this no name value that is gross profit add other income is lesser than the expenses that we have incurred than the figure we are getting. Uh, it is in the negative value. And if it is a negative value, it is a loss for the year. And uh, if it had been a positive value, this would be a positive uh, that is profit for the year. So we are done with preparing the income statement using single entry and incomplete records. Now in the last part, we'll be discussing some other methods and some other ways to calculate profit. And there is another working to calculate opening capital.